Greetings from Castle Goring, from Aurora, Vicky, and from me. Aurora has been licking me into ecstatic submission, so I'm going to have to release her very quickly. Otherwise, we will not, not get anything at all done today. So I've just released her. And now, without further ado, I am going to jump in because today we have hopefully we can keep the mood reasonably light although we have some rather trying matters to discuss nevertheless i think we can hopefully do it with a bit of levity so nancy lipschitz says and this is actually this first bit is just to give you all an insight into how effectively those of us who are seekers of the truth and justice and decency are prevailing over the forces of propagandized embroidery, shall we say. Nancy Lipschitz says, insulting her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II was a fatal mistake. Your Queen and the Queen of our hearts worldwide. Fatal mistake. Colleen Gayer says, That's when I saddled up North, Northern, sorry, California. SCM says, Colleen Gear, I'm with you from Louisiana. Sugar T says, and Sugar T is a bearded man in a flat cap of a certain age. Who could ever imagine anyone, big block capitals, insulting Queen Elizabeth? And a symbol which is a yellow person with a frown and a question mark. I'm afraid I'm not very much into f these symbols. I practically never see them. Tracy M says agreed and Kathy Awoyomoni says well said part of the Commonwealth and it has a Canadian flag. So I think we're beginning to get the idea that people from all over the world are onto the dreaded duo and their version of the truth. Their truth, which is usually spelled a three letter word beginning with L, ending with E, and I think that's a I in the middle there somewhere. So now, question. Lucille Rogers says, Lady C, Bauer suggests in his book that Harry might have been leaking Auntie Charles information to the press. I noticed in this week's Sunday Times two lead stories in the news section about the recent cash for access matter can you please give us an update of what is happening as well as your view on harry assisting the press in having a go at his father i consider it rank treachery do you yes lucille rogers i consider it rank treachery too that any son or daughter-in-law would assist the press against a father or a father-in-law. I just find it astonishing that they would behave the way they are doing. Having said that, there were two, the two lead stories on page 10 of the Sunday Times involved Prince Charles and the cash for access 
non-entity nonsense that has been whipped up by the Sunday Times. Uh, Mahfouz Mubarak Mahfouz and Michael Fawcett. And it says that a year after the revelations, the police still have not interviewed Michael Fawcett, who of course was stood down as the Prince of Wales's right-hand man, and who used to organize matters of this kind. Well, why would the police be bothering to interview Michael Fawcett when there is no crime that has been committed and they can't even be bothered or they're too busy to interview people who've been burgled and they're too busy to catch thieves. I mean, my local Tesco supermarket for some months now hasn't been able to have its cosmetic display counters open because of pilferage. And they told me in it when I asked. Uh, one of the girls said to me that, oh, they have it on CCTV footage. They called the police. The police say they have better things to do than catch little criminals. So why would they be wasting their time to interview somebody who was trying to raise money for the charities in this country? It's not a criminal offense. That is number one. And the second story, the headline, which I can show you, is Establishment's reaction to inquiries into Prince's causes, deafening silence. And there is a quote, there is an air of crisis. What crisis? Well, there is no crisis. Rupert Murdoch, for his own ambitions, has been trying to build a crisis and incidentally has been damaging people in the process. I know of people who have been damaged quite seriously by this and they are perfectly innocent. However, Rupert Murdoch not only has his anti-monarchist agenda to further, but now that he is involved in a divorce and Jerry Hall, <laughs> sweet girl that she is, has served him with papers to his consternation. He thought she'd never be able to serve him with papers. And of course, until she can serve him with papers, nothing can be done. Well, she served him with papers just before one of his grandchildren's weddings. <laughs> Good for you, Jerry. Great. Well, he's hoping to deflect attention away from himself. And as for Harry, treacherous. To put the knife in when he should be taken out bandages to preserve the wounds. Lucine Harayapatian says, Dares, notice that Charles and William congratulated Meghan on her birthday, not the Queen. She doesn't give Meghan the attention that Meg craves receiving from the Queen. And then lots of entertaining symbols. Well, <laughs> what can I tell you? The Queen is a model of probity and integrity. And she's not allowed herself to be sucked in while William and Charles have done the absolutely correct thing of wishing Meghan a happy birthday and using the most recent photographs available 
which were of her in that get up because I mean it really was a get up even though it was from Dior it was a get up at the service of Thanksgiving remember the white one with the hot day white dress white coat white microphone oh sorry I sorry my mouth slipped oh I don't think the microphone was white but he did protrude and yes you are quite right the queen issued no birthday greetings whatsoever but I can tell you something there are good reasons why she didn't there is stuff and I have alluded to this behind the scenes and I, that is taking place behind the scenes and I've alluded to this in the past and I'm going to allude to it again I know a little bit more than I'm letting on including with regard to matters of health and I'm not going to be any more specific than that and I have to tell you when some of what I know emerges some people are not going to be able to face even the devil Ruth Atarian says all I want to know is can the Queen order a divorce no she can't well I mean in theory she can express her desire for a divorce but in practice she can't order a divorce Harry and Meghan both have rights I keep on belaboring this point and you need to take it on board they have rights she needs to respect those rights it's not the same as the situation with Charles and Diana Charles was the heir to the throne Diana was the mother of a future king Meghan unless she is incredibly lucky is one plane crash away from the throne and planes don't crash that often poor Megsy baby the odds again are stacked against her <laughs> life's so wicked just one little plane crash away from the throne thank you odds are it's never gonna happen so no the Queen won't be ordering a divorce and even if she did until Harry is ready to leave if ever Harry is gonna be hooked on the substance to which he is addicted it's called a megalomaniac Dennis King says greetings Lady C Mickey and Aurora I have been enjoying your spot on and witty review of revenge thank you very much that's much appreciated were you aware that on Meg Meg megalomaniacs 41st birthday people magazine released its cover featuring Kate Middleton with the headline the making of a queen I don't think this was an accident which makes me think the Kate cover on eight stroke four was inten intentional people magazine in the past has been one of the biggest supporters of megalomaniac and Harry Larius <laughs> I guess the editor now realizes the tide has turned your thoughts well Dennis King yes I was aware of the fact that People Magazine on Megsy Baby's birthday everybody's so mean they're all racists everybody's so mean they just hate me it's because I'm too white to be black and too black to be white I hate everybody hates me <laughs> Everybody hates me because they're racist. 
never able to be the star that I truly should have been. Oh, it's racism. Yes, it is. Mm. Of course, Megsy baby. It's racism. Well, yes, isn't it interesting that they would have chosen that thing to put Catherine on the cover and the Queen as well and make the point that Catherine is shining brightly in the royal constellation because she is doing everything Megsy baby was far too great and grand and too precious to do like work be discreet keep your trap shut don't tell lies don't pretend to be a victim when you're one of the most privileged people on earth uh, don't lie about the fact that your father uh, didn't put you through your schooling when he has the bills to prove that he did. Uh, don't be 18 months pregnant at six months and nine months pregnant at eight months and 27 months pregnant at nine months with the variable bumps that have excited so much comment. I mean, Catherine's bump has never been seen to go flop to the right, flop to the left, flop to the right, flop to the left. Nor has Catherine, despite being very athletic, ever been witnessed to at eight months pregnant go down on her knees, on her haunches with her knees. And her legs, her knees, sorry, tightly joined together. All those things that Catherine hasn't done, Megsy baby, is what makes Catherine ideal queen material. And what makes you ideal garbage material. And I'm glad people did what they did. There, I am assured it was not an accident. Of course, there will be hell to pay because Sunshine Sachs is not going to be pleased. However, they have established editorial autonomy, if only on one occasion. But let's not hold our breath because I think we will find the sunshine shining, shining down in Saxful on People magazine yet again as we hear what a wonderful humanitarian Meghan Markle is. One muscling in on somebody's grief at a time. And I now have from Jean Martin or Jeannie Martin or Jean Martin, however she pronounces her name, because the name is spelled in the French style, so it could be French, it could be English, it could be American. Harry is a spitting image of young Henry Herbert, 17th Earl of Pembroke to me. Well, I'm afraid I don't agree. I'm sorry, but I don't agree. I think that Harry actually looks like Charles and Lord Mountbatten. The way his eyes are placed in his head, the nose, I don't think he looks like Henry Pembroke. Henry Pembroke was a far more classically good looking man. And yes, there are the rumours 
that I am the first one who ever addressed that Diana stepped out with Henry Pembroke between the birth of the children. But Henry is dead and so is Diana. And believe me, Diana wasn't going to be so stupid as to get pregnant with Henry Pembroke's baby. Diana was very canny. Yolanta Valash says, Harry is suing his grandma again. Exactly for what? And what can we expect realistically out of this? Well, I think I alluded earlier to the fact that there are things behind the scenes that I can't speak about and that some of them refer to the health of certain individuals. I can tell you something. Harry and Meghan are begging for big trouble. If their objective is to end up the most despised couple on earth, they are going about it in a very positive manner. In fact, more than positive. Effective is a better word. Because positive could mean that it is in a good manner. And I don't mean positive in a good manner. I mean positive in the way of certainty. Yes, Harry has issued proceedings again for the second time now, against the Home Office, this time to include the Metropolitan Police. He has named Sir Edward Young as being partly responsible for the decision to strip him of his, in his view, its entitlement to internationally protected status and perpetual security for himself, his wife, his children, and doubtless his geese as well. Make no mistake about this. Harry and Meghan have been very clever in saying that they're not directly attacking the Queen and then attacking people who they know are acting on the Queen's behalf at the Queen's behest. You can be in no doubt of the fact that Sir Edward Young, who is the Queen's private secretary, was acting on her behalf with her knowledge, consent and approval and at her behest when he liaised with the police and the Home Office to deprive Harry of the protection to which he is no longer entitled. Now, of course, if Harry chooses to make himself the most unpopular man on this island and then wishes to come onto this island, he can't say, I deserve protection because I've been a jerk of the highest order, which is what he's trying to do. And he's trying to use his fears. Oh, I'm so terrified of my, for my wife and my children. They weren't so terrified that they couldn't roll down the window for a photo op. It's all rubbish. And it is, make no mistake about it, a direct attack upon Her Majesty the Queen herself. Now, the Queen's health is not what it ought to be. She is a 96-year-old lady who has many responsibilities, 
and has been subjected to the most intense pressure for the last two years, much of which has been due to Harry and Meghan's completely unacceptable behaviour. What can we expect from this? I hope a resounding failure on Harry's part. I hope that the courts will back up the decision that has already been made and show the little twerp to the door. You know, the, the, Harry has already cost us, the British people, over a hundred thousand pounds in the first action that he has instituted. Harry and Meghan are loose cannons, firing in all directions. Because she was a failed but bright paralegal in suits. And she has absorbed Rachel Zane's character. And Rachel Zane was given some of her characteristics. How much more of this rubbish are we going to be subjected to? How much more of this nonsense are we, the British people, going to be made to endure? Harry and Meghan really need to have their brains and hearts cleansed. That's for starters. It's a pity that the laws of this country and the United States are such that people who create havoc and have seriously disordered personalities cannot be nailed the way mad people who have less malignant tendencies can be deprived of their freedom. What can I say? It is what it is. Annette Phillips says, Hello, Lady C. Hope you are well. I have followed you from the beginning and adore your channel. Thank you very much. What do you think about Thomas Markle Jr.'s YouTube channel? I think it's hilarious. I agree, my dear. I think it is hilarious too. As you know, I do not make a practice of looking at other YouTube channels for various very sound reasons one of which is to retain my autonomy and integrity. However, I do know that some of them are very good. I'm not going to say which ones. You all know which ones I mean. But I made an exception with Thomas Markle Sr. and I've made an exception with Thomas Markle Jr. I enjoy what he's doing thoroughly. Now, I think you all know that I am in touch with the Markle family. So, you know, and where my sympathies lie. Oh, and that I actually have a lot more time and respect for them than I do for Megsy Baby. Because I don't think they are malicious. I don't think they're evil. 
I don't think they're nasty. I think they were humiliated greatly by her. I think they were cast deliberately by her into an invidious position so that she would render them silenced. Well, they weren't silenced. And of course, at first, everybody was taken aback by the things they said, but it turns out they were mostly true and fair. Maybe not always done in the most appropriately diplomatic fashion, but when you know what the score is, you can well understand where they were coming from. And one of the things I enjoy about Thomas Markle Jr.'s channel is his humour. Now, we all know Megsy Baby has no humour whatsoever. But then again, why would she? She's great. She's a demigoddess. She's a huge star. She has the weight of her, the world on her shoulders because she's going to save us. One act of compassion and private plane journey at a time because she's so great. She doesn't have time for humor. But he has time for humor, Thomas Markle Jr. And he's very funny. So I would encourage everybody to look at the channel. And I hope he continues in the vein that he's been going. He's been put, all the Markles have been put into an invidious position. She is the one who dragged them into the public eye with her misplaced ambitions. And she is the one who stripped them of their dignity. And they have as valid a right as she does to be heard. She did it to them. They didn't ask to be made famous. They didn't ask to be dragged into the public eye. She dragged them with her misplaced ambitions and her misplaced loyalties and her misplaced values. So if she has a right to a voice, so do they. And I say, good on you, Thomas Markle Jr. Continue. It's very witty and entertaining and fun. And I hope you continue in the light vein that you are going. And you are very funny about Meg's baby's birthday. <laughs> More than that, I'm not going to say. Look at the channel. Endless possibilities. Uh, Hello, Lady C. Did you wish Megsy Baby a happy birthday? <gasps> Mickey! Aurora! <gasps> Did you send that birthday greeting to Megsy Baby? <gasps> you didn't! You ate it! Oh, she's gonna think I'm a racist! But Megsy Baby, Aurora and Mickey can't be racists. They're black, brown and white all in one. So they can't be racist. So please don't hold it against them. To continue the question. Well, Perry Tyler, black American movie producer and best friend of Oprah Winfrey, wrote Meghan Markle a happy birthday post on Twitter. He stated, I've had a front row seat in your life for the past few years. I've watched you endure things that would have broken a lot of people. I wonder if Oprah and Sunshine Sachs put in a call. Also, 
What does that do for the people who claimed Meghan Markle bullied them? What are your thoughts? Well, I can get why Tyler Perry felt the need to send the birthday greetings to her. I can't get why he sent them in the way he did. Unless, of course, being American, he thinks that the world begins and ends in the United States of America. Because unless he's dramatically insular, he will have to know that the British people and many people in the Commonwealth are, which incidentally comprises a quarter of this world's population and more than that of its land space. So that rather trumps anything that Tyler Perry has backing him up or encircling him or being barriers to greater knowledge. I think the way he has gone about it is distasteful and unnecessary. Meghan is not a victim, Tyler Perry. Meghan is a perpetrator. Meghan bullied people out of a job. Nobody has ever bullied Meghan out of anything. Meghan bullied people out of their livelihood. Meghan's behavior towards Princess Charlotte of Cambridge, as I revealed her, gratis people from Givenchy, I think it was either earlier this year or last year, Meghan's behaviour towards three-year-old Princess Charlotte was so beyond belief that I hang my head in shame that any human being could have behaved towards a three-year-old child the way she, the staff at Givon, she said, she behaved towards little Charlotte, a three-year-old child. What nonsense are you on about? You've watched her indoor things. What things? The distress of a three-year-old child? The discomfiture of other children? The disgrace of the royal family, which she has sought to execute? The accusations of racism against the royal family generally? What has she had to endure? I know what we, her victims, have had to endure. But what has she had to endure? You tell me. I mean, quite frankly, your loyalty is misplaced. But I get why you had to do it. Because they, they, there are rumours proliferating throughout the internet that you had to boot her out of your house because she bullied her, your staff. You've not denied those rumours. If they're not true, why did you not deny them? Why have you allowed them to proliferate with your silence? Deny those. Don't deprive Meghan's victims of their right to be heard and to be identified as what they are. The victims of a bully. The victims of an adventuress. The victims of an ingrate the victims of a hustler who has treated the a thousand year old institution and a great nation as if it were a card shark's opportunity 
to make herself some money. Really, I never knew who you were before, and I hope I never run across you. I gather you're quite famous, but I'm afraid your world, thank God, is not my world. And if these are the values you uphold, I hope we never cross paths. Elizabeth Pengson says, ho, ho, ho. No wonder Enninful married his best, his boyfriend, sorry. I do wish people wouldn't use constant acronyms. It just drives me crazy. Because I don't normally use them and they trip me up all the time. But anyway, I suppose the fault is mine, not yours, Elizabeth Pengson, <laughs> because you're simply doing what everybody else does. So to resume, no wonder any fool married his boyfriend at Longleat House and the Harkles weren't invited last February. <laughs> well, Elizabeth Pengson, not only were the Harkers safely not at Edward Enninful's marriage at Longleat. But they weren't at the Obama's party either. They haven't been at anywhere, any high profile event. Oh, of course, I forgot. They are the ones who presented the Oscar for best film. Or was that just the announcement? That wasn't the actuality. <gasps> Caught out yet again. Believing that everything Megsy Baby and H say is true. When of course, by now I should know it isn't. So they didn't, did they? present the best picture Oscar. <laughs> All the things that they haven't done. And then the things that they have done, belly flops one after the other. Speaking to an empty hall in front of the non-existent General Assembly at the United Nations. Sashaying down the aisle in that rather grotesque looking white over hot outfit on a boiling hot day with a hat nice hat but not suitable for the outfit as if she were Joan Collins on speed dial hustle hustle Let's swing those hips and shake those shoulders. Gotta let everybody know I'm hot. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Maybe she'll end up like Joni Baby. Mm. That would be interesting to see. And I'm not going to say what I mean by that either. I'm being very naughty. And the last question is, Silver Moon, what do you think Tom Bauer meant when he said Her Majesty the Queen had no choice but to approve the marriage? Was she faking a preg pregnancy to make sure she would get married? It's in my book. It's in my book, so Silver Moon, plainly you haven't read my book. It's not rarely in Bauer's book, but it's in my book. I quote, I retell in slightly cleaned up manner a conversation that Harry had with the Queen and Prince Philip when they objected to his marrying 
the entity that he has married. And Harry's repost, and I'm not going to repeat it, because I cleaned it up very slightly, because it was so incendiary, and the cleaned up version is still incendiary. Suffice it to say, he played the race card, and they folded. Well, I have to tell you, I know of another high-profile case where the son fell in love with another version of Meghan Markle. And... The mother put her foot down and said, if you marry that whatever, you will be disinherited. And if she dares to pop out an illegitimate child, which will be the next thing she'll do, it will never inherit a penny either. And no matter if you marry her or don't, as long as you are with her, neither she nor any progeny of hers will ever inherit a penny. It, the mother also advised not to break up the relationship, understanding that the lure of the siren was sufficiently great that the unfortunate male had been love bombed and hooked. Well, it took a few years, but he finally saw the light and the relationship came to an end. And the person in question has always privately said, I'm not the queen. I am not prepared to succumb to blackmail under any circumstances. Because the person in question understood that it was going to be blackmail if the marriage proceeded. And the Queen and Prince Philip did not understand that by relenting when they did, they were simply allowing the perpetuation of the problem and that the race card would be played again as indeed it has been. But of course, the other party of whom I speak is not royal, very well known, but not royal, and so had less to lose by taking the stand that they did. But let me put it this way, had I been in the Queen's shoes, I would have done what that other person did. I would have said, you'll just have to uh, go with whatever and we will have to cope with the backlash, but we cannot consent to the marriage not on the grounds of colour or class or even background, which is a word that can co cover a multitude of evils, but on the grounds of character. Because 
it is on the grounds of character and the unsuitability of that other girl who was also an adventuress and also was there for the main chance and was also money mad and had actually been indiscreet enough to tell people that she had targeted the heir knowing his financial and worldly circumstances. I suppose I'm trying to figure out how to wrap this up well. No, she didn't fake a pregnancy. She didn't need to fake a pregnancy. She had colored cards in her hand and you can use that adjective to fulfill many different descriptions. It is used purposely because it addresses a multiplicity of issues, both overt and covert. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening to this. I hope it has been of some interest to you. If it has, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and keep the questions and comments coming in. Hopefully, I will be able to answer one or two questions not related to Harry and Meghan. Please send them in. God bless and goodbye.